12s. Today, we will be discussing hearing defects. Many people have hearing defects. Our focus will be on the cause and treatment of two types of hearing defects. We will look at middle ear infection and the use of grommets, as well as deafness and the use of hearing aids and cochlear implants. Let's move on. Right, as we've mentioned before, many people have hearing defects and they can occur as a result of infection. Let's begin with middle ear infection, which doctors refer to as otitis media. If you look at a normal ear, you will notice there's the outer ear filled with air. Here's the air filled cavity here. Here's our middle ear. And in the middle ear, I can see my eardrum. I can see my hammer, anvil and stirrup, the three ossicles. I can still see the air filled space or the air filled cavity. I can also see my eustachian tube that's coming from my pharynx, right? Connecting my ear to my nose. Okay, now let's look at an infected middle ear. Right? Okay, if you look at an infected middle ear, you will notice there's a lot of redness and there's a lot of swelling there. You can see inflammation, right? Well, this condition in the middle ear is called otitis media or middle ear infection. Now, otitis media is a bacterial or viral infection and it's very, very common in early childhood. This infection can spread, right, from respiratory areas like our nose and our mouth and our throat, okay? And from there, from the throat, it gets into the middle ear, right? So there's the eustachian tube, which is our link between our nose and our ears, right? So these viruses and bacteria have entered the tube from the throat or the pharynx, okay? Right, so what's going to happen? We will notice that once the bacteria and the viruses enter from our pharynx into our middle ear, we find that the lining of our middle ear is starting to swell. The swelling in the lining of our middle ear is going to block the eustachian tube, causing a buildup of discharge or fluid or pus, right, in the air filled cavity of our middle ear. Now, the buildup of fluid or discharge in our middle ear is going to cause conductive hearing loss because now pressure is going to be building up within the middle ear preventing the ossicles from vibrating. This fluid build up or this discharge that's building up in the middle ear is also going to put pressure on our eardrum causing our eardrum to tear right and this leads to a lot of pain and inflammation again in the middle ear and we must remember that damage to a child's hearing will affect the child's speech and language well how do we treat middle ear infections let's look at our next slide well how will a doctor treat you if you had to have middle ear infection he may prescribe a course of antibiotics to help clear your middle ear infection. If antibiotics are not effective, then grommets will be used. What are grommets? Grommets are small metal or plastic tubes that are inserted into your eardrum. What does it do? Well, it will allow air to enter into the middle ear and reduce the build up of fluid. Here's our tympanic membrane or our eardrum. A small incision or a little cut is made in your eardrum and then a little metal or plastic tube is inserted into that incision, right? To drain out the fluid. So the grommets are sometimes inserted 
Why? To bypass the eustachian tube and create another channel now through which air can enter into the middle ear. Because remember, the eustachian tube cannot allow air to enter into the middle ear freely now because it is blocked up with this discharge that is building up inside the middle ear. So that is the function of the grommet within the ear. The middle ear can be treated with antibiotics. If that doesn't work, a grommet can be inserted into the eardrum of the middle ear to help with the drainage of fluid by allowing more air to enter freely into the middle ear. Right. Another hearing defect that I would like to speak about is hearing loss and deafness. What's the difference between the two? Well, hearing loss is the reduced ability to hear sound, right? They can hear sound but not very well. Deafness, on the other hand, is the complete inability to hear sound. They cannot hear any sound at all. So that's the difference between uh, deafness and hearing loss. Well, let's talk about the causes of hearing loss. Well, the causes of hearing loss can be damage to the inner ear, now, aging and exposure to very loud noise may cause wear and tear on the hairs of our nerve cells inside the cochlea, the one that sends sound signals to the brain. Now, when these hair cells or nerve cells are damaged or missing, then electrical signals aren't transmitted as efficiently and then that can result in hearing loss. Then what happens is that higher pitched tones very loud noises may become muffled to you. It may also become difficult for you to pick out words against any background noise. Another common cause of hearing loss or deafness can be a gradual build up of earwax. Earwax can block the ear canal and prevent the conduction of sound waves. It can also be due to an infection. For example, what we spoke about now, the middle ear infection, right, could cause hearing loss. And this is due to the fluid accumulating or building up in the middle ear, preventing the ossicles from vibrating against one another, transmitting the sound further. This can lead to muffled sounds. Hearing loss can also be due to a ruptured eardrum or tympanic membrane perforation when your eardrum perforates or tears. When does this happen? This happens when there's loud blasts of noise, sudden changes in pressure, poking your eardrum with an object, and even infection, like the middle ear infection that we spoke about, can cause our eardrum to rupture and affect our he hearing loss. Let's look at the treatment. Well, how can hearing loss be treated? Number one, it can be treated with medication. Number two, by draining the middle ear. Number three, it can also be treated with hearing aids, right? All of these have been used successfully. What are hearing aids? Well, look at my slide. This is a hearing aid. A hearing aid is a small electronic device that amplifies incoming sound, makes the sound louder for the person who's using it, okay? Who is using it? Well, a hearing aid is used by patients who are not totally deaf. Let's look at what a hearing aid comprises of. A hearing aid comprises of three main parts. It has a microphone, it has an amplifier, and it has a speaker, right? Those are the three basic parts. What is its function? It helps to amplify or make the sounds louder for the patients using it. Who are the patients using it? The ones who are not totally deaf. However, for severe hearing problems like deafness, a cochlear implant is surgically implanted inside the ear. What is a cochlear implant? Well, a cochlear implant is an electronic device that artificially stimulates the auditory nerve. It is used by patients with severe deafness. Please note that both 
these devices, the hearing aid and the cochlear implants, are very expensive devices. But very useful because with intense therapy, implants can help young children speak a language and acquire developmental and social skills. Let's talk about the attitudes towards people with sensory defects. Now these people are often shunned or disregarded by the community. But the Disability Discrimination Act DDA of 1995 aims to end this discrimination and to ensure that disabled people enjoy all human rights on an equal basis with others.